So hello, I'm Heidi hey. back from the Wisdom Factory. After a long time, I got inspired by getting to know Christine King, who is today with me. I'm getting inspired to retake my series of interviews. So today we want to talk a little bit about the Enneagram. And I imagine that more or less everybody knows what the Enneagram is. If not, you might watch previous um, previous interviews with other people or group sessions. And the very important one is the one which we did uh, last Monday, no, when was it? Uh, the date, I think it was the 8th of December, 2021. And it was the group Women Matters, a group of international women. And Christine joined us for the first time and she helped us to understand our Enya types. So uh, we don't want to start with what is the Enneagram and what type might you be and so on. That's not the, you might do a course with Christine, then you can understand it. But today I'm much more interested in special specialties, we can say, no? You, you talked in the pre the conversation, you talked about the levels of uh, development, which obviously are a little bit different than the ones I know from integral theory. But before we dive into all that, I say hello to you, Christine, <laughs> officially. And I would yeah. like to ask you to just say two or three words about you, where you are, what you do, why, why you are with me, for instance, and why you do what you do. Of course, of course, happy to say that. Um, I live on what was a farm, about seven acres, and it was a horse farm. Mm -hmm. and it's right outside of Asheville, North Carolina. So Asheville is a very thriving, exciting, small city. And so I get blessed by that, but also I've got the quiet. Mm -hmm. I'm being at the end of a dirt road. And then the house is bounded by a beautiful creek. And there are places where we can sit at the creek and do exercises there or swing from the trees. You know? So um, I'm, I love the nature, you know, and my house has big windows. I'm looking out right now. And um, cathedral ceiling windows. So I can feel like I'm outside at the same time inside. Mm -hmm. So that's where I am geographically. Um, I've been here about 10 years. I was a university professor for like, it seems like forever. <laughs> directing graduate programs in organizational learning and leadership training. And I did most of that work, most of my own training, it was actually outside of the United States. So mm -hmm. I, um, it's nice to feel outside of the United States right now, talking with you, knowing where you are, because I've spent 20 years in Europe and Asia. And um, a dream of mine would just to be able to get on an airplane and go see you. <laughs> yeah, that would be beautiful. <laughs> that would be wonderful. But we have this opportunity. And so um, I didn't go looking for the Enneagram. It found me. Mm -hmm. I had been working with the Myers-Briggs in team building for many, many years. And it seemed perfectly adequate until a friend sent me the book, The Wisdom of the Enneagram by um, Don Riso and Russ Hudson. And I'd heard, because I'd lived at Esalen and I'd heard about the Enneagram, but um, I didn't really know what that meant. And so I, I opened this book up, actually it was in New Year's Day. I opened it and it went to the page that ended up being my Enneatype. And I didn't look further. I went, oh my God, how did they know all that about me? <laughs> Things that, that I thought were my secrets, my shadow. Yeah, exactly. you know, all of that was like a neon light as if it was in New York City on Times Square, all of you know, the darkest things that I had been somehow trying to manage in my life, they were spelled out eloquently. <laughs> And I went, well, then <laughs> the first thing I did the next day, um, 
January 2nd, I, their offices were open. And I said, when is your next intensive program? And I began it then and uh, studied pretty solidly, still holding my position in a university, but going up to Stonebridge, New York, where the Enneagram Institute, that's their home base. And um, just knew that that was my calling to bring it into the world in different ways. And I did, I did that in, with my graduate students. Each time I would go to a more advanced level, we would experiment with things together. <laughs> because I was so enthusiastic, they couldn't help but go, oh, okay, you know, I'll write my master's thesis about this. You know, so there was just a lot of churning and curiosity mm. and working with them. And then that gave me more confidence, I think. Because there's one thing to absorb it in the room with these master teachers, but to do something with it. And you had the perfect. <laughs> it was right there for me on a platter. These yeah. wonderful, and they were all. It was, they were all adults. It just turned out to be that way. They were mostly people going back to get a master's degree, so they were in their forties or older. So they they really took it on in terms of applying it to their work and their families. And first to themselves, no? and for you as a teacher, is it is so helpful if you know that any type of your students, you know. Yeah, it was very interesting because I was I was a beginner with that. Now, when someone walks through the door, I can go, uh huh. You know? <laughs> I kind of have a sense in my body of what because it is energetic, you know, mm, exactly an energetic pattern that we have. So I stumbled a bit, but that was. A wonderful part of the learning and then we would just stay with it together in the student mm -hmm. until it really rang true which number mm -hmm. they identified with and at the same time because i got more confidence i started taking it into organizations mm -hmm. i mean one of the most interesting was one of my students was the head of um, hr human resources uh -huh. human resources for mm -hmm. the largest hospice in the united states and she talked to his to she talked to her CEO and said, "You got to bring this woman in and help our teams work better." So openings like that happened, and so I got a lot of experience working in organizations because of my students. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. And then I think I gained so much confidence. I thought I'm just I was ready just to be completely free. I didn't want to be in a bureaucratic setting anymore. Yeah. So I would like to ask you, because there are some people who say, oh, I don't want to be put in, in boxes and they see it as a danger or feel like you could see every their secrets and so on. And then they feel sort of oh, better not. So what would you say to this? The, do, is the benefit, benefit outweighing the, the danger of maybe being seen? <laughs> Well, in terms of the box, I've certainly heard that a lot. A lot of people just instantly turn off. And my place of what I feel is deep wisdom is it's actually the opposite. It showed me a box I was in that I didn't know I was in. Exactly. And that's why I spent the day sobbing mm -hmm. on January 1st, you know, 2008, when I saw my pattern exactly that's also my experience just awful awful yeah. and I, I now i laugh with other people when they want to identify their any number they say i say well if you absolutely hate the less healthy qualities bingo you probably got it <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah. so sometimes this is an easy way to to come home to um what your essence is you know you that's that's the value that's why i do the enneagram not because it's um gets you out of a box necessarily but yeah that's a factor it's that the enneagram is is so much more than a personality system it identifies the qualities of nine different essences and that that's the core like it's close to the it's very close to soul so if we can actually have words to capture something about our souls, then, then the world opens up to make more choices that reflect accessing our soul. 
through the wisdom of, of the Enneagram. And I, you know, I could read a couple of examples from my book, the book Choosing Compassion, the Enneagram's Nine Pathways, because the wisdom of the Enneagram describes the essences at the end of each of the discussions of personality, but there are just so many words in it. So many words, and I've reduced it to a short poem, which mm -hmm. makes it possible to feel it more easily, I think, with less words. Do you have it there? Can we finish the recording with, uh, with your poem? We can. Um, let me ask Blakely to help me. Blakely, could you do me a favor, please? And my book is over there on the floor, Choosing Compassion. You see that? There you go. Mm -hmm. Isn't yeah. it great to have this wonderful person helping me? <laughs> Thank you. So what I was thinking about, it was exactly with me when I heard I'm doing, oh, wonderful. I'm doing, uh, how was it? Manipulative, manipulative uh, victimhood or something like that, no? As the negative essence of, of the Enya type four. And I thought, oh, horrible. I don't want to be that. I don't want to be that. So uh, it's very important to understand that every type has something which is not really uh, very desirable and when we live in this in this state in our lives in the in the negative part of the enneagram then life is probably not so not so fine uh, no. so i'm wondering is it that with the stages what you are talking about that you come into the positive or what are the stages the levels you mean the levels the le levels yeah. level of development mm -hmm. I said to do with uh, going from the negative pole to the positive pole or not? It depends upon, again, we're talking about personality right now, not yeah. essence. Yeah, yeah. So it depends on where an individual is, mm -hmm. healthy or less healthy. At the moment, he or she begins to identify their enneotype. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I've recently interviewed... Um, an individual who quickly identified himself as a nine. Mm -hmm. And as the more we talked about it, there are nine levels of development. Okay, three that are unhealthy, three that are average, and three that are very healthy. Mm -hmm. he, he, we looked at through the levels together. I said, what's most familiar to you? And he was already, the way he's living his life, he was already at level one. Mm -hmm. So the Enneagram was only validating the path that he had followed. And then he got to look at the essence side, which was new, the spiritual mm -hmm. side. And so he's, he's developing and growing in that direction. Whereas I can think of a, a number four who I interviewed quite a few years ago, very, very successful man. He had been in a powerful position in Hollywood. Let's just keep it general so we're not tracking who who I'm talking about, um, but when he, as soon as he saw the four, that my instinct was to show him that pattern first, he went, oh my God, I'm at the bottom of, I'm at the bottom, the very bottom, I've been there. And his motivation then was actually to go to Stone Ridge, New York and study more. Oh, he'd, been, he'd been in a lot of therapy, but it hadn't ever opened up a door for him that, would make sense and so he he did integrate a fair amount so those are the two extremes mm -hmm. most people who um are living from their least healthy qualities are not going to go towards the enneagram but i just happened to know him and i said suggested that he look at it but um most yeah so basically that's what when people come to it, and most of us are, as Russ Hudson says, I love to quote him, he said, you know, most of us are in some, especially because of our cultures that we're living in, we are maintaining somehow in the average zones. Mm -hmm. And to move up takes some conscious determination. Exactly. To do, to do certain things differently. And that's where I get to come in and talk about, depending upon the number that they might be identifying with, then we try to titrate the kinds of things that might best support you to go up the levels and hopefully maintain them, even when things are 
falling apart around us. And that's, that's why I do the work because it can be a fast track to growth because the levels are so specific to each one of the nine patterns. Mm -hmm. And I haven't yet, I mean, I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of people. I haven't yet, once they get the number correctly, I haven't ever seen anyone who can't identify mm -hmm. a description mm -hmm. that might get them at level four or mm -hmm. level three. Yeah. I want to, to interfere here a little bit because I'm mainly uh, followed by people who know integral theory. And there, the levels of development are different. There are uh, psychosocial levels of development. And for putting in, into place who is interested in personal development and also in the Enneagram must have already a certain level of development from spiral dynamics or from integral. So, you know, you, you need to be at least what we call the orange level, I would say, where you are curious about things yeah. and where you want to know. Your before. inner world, you're curious about your inner world. Who am yeah. I and what yeah. am I, how am I influencing others? And Yeah, and even, and maybe not yet that, but just wanting to know is just, yeah. just enough to, 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 to begin to study. And then maybe you come into the next level and, and want to know who am I and what is life and so on, you know? And sure. then, uh, so that's definitely a difference. And so I'm interested in the levels you are fletching out. So... I'm curious. Tell me. <laughs> so can you can we, use my type if you want to. All right, because so, right, every single, mm -hmm. um, each of the nine enneagram numbers has their very own specific levels. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at the four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to open my wisdom of the enneagram book because it's handy and go to four and i'm going to ask you to kind of as i'm coming up with the right page here in the book um i certainly don't have all these they're very very detailed things and i don't have them all memorized i know what's healthy average or unhealthy but the very it's very, like it's very, very concrete here so i'm going to that place mm -hmm. um and I'm going to, we always begin with, you know, a fairly comfortable high average, okay? So I'm going to start with level four. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read that to you. And I'm going to ask you how much you relate to that or don't as a typical day now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yes. not one day, but just like an average. The last mm -hmm. one. Okay. Fours begin to fear that their changing feelings will not sustain them and their creativity. So they use their imaginations to prolong and um, intensify their moves. They use fantasy and um, style to bolster their individuality and begin to dream of someone who will help rescue them. Oh, that's very long ago. That's not now. <laughs> okay. Very long ago. So I'm going to go up to level three. Okay. okay. And what's, what's typical for um, a typical day? Level three. Fours reinforce their self-image by expressing their individuality through creative action. They are eloquent and subtle exploring their feelings and impressions and finding ways of, of sharing them with others. Their creativity is highly personal, but often has universal implications. That is nearer, nearer to what it is. So that's in the healthy zone, level three. We're gonna stay in the healthy zone and go up to two. Mm -hmm. Fours focus on their own feelings and preferences to establish a clear sense of personal identity, self-image, in quotes. I am sensitive, different, and self-aware, end quote. Yeah, I can say, yeah. yeah. 
And now we're going to level one. Okay. So this is the bridge to going to, to essence. Mm -hmm. The essence of the four, and there'll be some qualities mm -hmm. in this. And I haven't got my glasses <laughs> here because this is a fairly long paragraph. Fours let go of the belief that they are more flawed than others and are thus freed from their self-absorption. Their basic desire to find themselves and their significance is also achieved. And thus their problems with their identity and its stability are solved. They are self-renewing, redemptive, and revelatory. Most of the time, I would say that's it. <laughs> Not always. I always have to come back to it, but it's... But yeah. you recognize it. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, in difficult times that we're experiencing, it takes a little bit more focus to stay in that place. And having... An and coming back into that place also with certain techniques, I get myself back into that. You know, and yeah. you would have very, very specific creative ways that you would do that. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to read the essence, which is where we, I would like to say we all, people who are interested in the Enneagram, I mean, that's why I did it. I wanted to understand my essence. Mm -hmm. And so I think that becomes a motivation we have. And as I said before, it's kind of wordy in this book, but in this, I've attempted to give you a poem. Okay, let's see what yeah. you think about it. All right. Okay. Okay. I receive my ever renewing, transforming, true nature. I receive magical flow in the present moment. I receive precious, deep contact with myself and others. I receive my soul's creative expression. I release any need to be unique. I already am. And then that's the poem. And then I have a, a Rumi quote for each one of the nine. And the Rumi quote for the four is, when you lose all sense of self, the bonds of a thousand chains will vanish. Rumi. Let me read that again. When you lose all sense of self, the bonds of a thousand chains will vanish. Yeah, yeah that's not yet completely reached. <laughs> well, I, I think yeah, our cultures don't make it particularly easy for us. We don't go around seeing others' essence. We don't get too curious about another person's essence. And we can be distracted from paying attention to our own. Mm -hmm. Sometimes what I do with myself and sometimes clients, I take a phrase or two phrases from my essence and I put it someplace that I can see mm -hmm. easily so that neurologically my body knows that, it recognizes it, and it helps me stay at a higher functioning level then mm -hmm. by accessing some words from the essence. And I've seen people change relationships in their families and in their workplaces when they simply shift their attention. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to come back. Uh, you said the essence is when you lose. No, when you, how, can, can you read it again? This so, phrase was uh, then that many chains are resolving or something like this. How was it? Read Rumi's quote. Or do you no, want me but, to what you said just now to to when I said I haven't achieved it yet when you lose the identification with the self or something like yeah, this and yeah. then many chains are bro or broken or, or are resolving Vanish. well, then. vanishing yeah and that's uh, what I can experience occasionally sometimes only for a second or for two seconds you know then I say oh yeah no. It's just a very subtle feeling of. Uh. So what I will do, I will send you um, a copy of this, mm -hmm. the poem, and of course, Rumi's quote, and you can choose to have that be very accessible in a variety of ways, mm -hmm. copies of it in places. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm working with something right now that I have all over the place. 
And I, just, I think visuals are very important. You see, the, can you see this? Yeah. Gratitude, compassion. Gratitude, awe. compassion, awe, taking us to loving presence. And it's I'm working. This is this is coming as a result of wanting something that's generic for all Enneagram types, and is based actually on neuroscience. I'm following a neuroscientist, Lisa Feldman Barrett, who is saying that compassion, gratitude, and awe, those states of being, create brain plasticity instantly. Oh, and that includes me. That just really fascinates me. That's why I designed this so that we can realize those states take us to this. Yeah. So the visuals that we see can actually check when my, with my clients, their breathing changes when they look at this. Visuals are much my more. breathing changes when I look at it, so I get it. It's much more powerful images than, than words. Yeah. yeah. So your book is done by images, but what I have understood, it's very difficult to, to get, at least in Europe. Maybe in America, it's more easy. Yeah, I, I'm just, I think after being with our group last week mm -hmm. and talking about how expensive it is to get it to Europe, I actually took a dive to talk to some consultants about what we can do to solve that. Mm -hmm. So Good. I'm curious about the possibility that it could go on Amazon Good. with making some changes. So, so, so have thanks to you <laughs> and the lovely group that stirred my curiosity that I don't want somebody, I don't wanna to have to spend a hundred dollars to send a book to London. <laughs> and we know that from our conversation right yeah, yeah that's yeah. crazy that's just crazy it's too much yeah anyway um i think that was a very deep dive into the enneagram in a very different sort uh mm -hmm. in a very different way than i knew the enneagram before and mm -hmm. i think everybody in new enneagram for people who are watching this they still don't know if they are ooh, one or two or three or four or five and don't rely on these strange online questioning. Oh, no, please don't. Do that. <laughs> no, no. Like I've I've, people lock in with the wrong mirror of themselves and it actually does damage. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I, I can agree after having done a, a long course with Claudio Naranjo and having discovered my Enya type um, and then having done uh, online course uh, is my Enya type was never in the first place, but somewhere there. So I can really confirm that they are not valid. And you also gave us the explanation why, because it's not about just about behavior. Yeah. What do you do? And when do you do what? That can be many types can do the same thing, the actual thing, but why are they doing it? Is the motivation. Yeah, the motivation. motivation, exactly. The, sub the subconscious motivation that you begin to see when you, you know, yeah, you exactly. get it, the conscious motivation and the unconscious motivations. Exactly. And there's another whole subject, which I'd love to talk with you about the subtypes, the self-preservation, the social and the sexual, because there's a lot, there's so much there about that is subconscious. Mm -hmm. so, I would do that in a different appointment. I would just uh, close up with this one and ask you, you are doing still courses, no? In the yeah. NIA type. And you said not so much uh, the, the introduction? Or no, I don't. Do you, or, no, I don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> or that others do that. I like to do the advanced work, mm -hmm. but I do, I'm very, I love to work with someone who's curious to help them identify their number. I love doing that. Yeah. I just don't like to teach the structure of the Enneagram. Yeah, you, can yeah, yeah. you can book it. I, yeah. love, I love working with a beginner and then taking them just as fast as we can to go deeply into their strengths. Yeah. Focus on their essence and begin to let go of the things that, that like some of the shadow that I've had to let go of. It's mm -hmm. I'm a lot lighter <laughs> than I was prior to the Enneagram. Exactly, me lot. too. I laugh a lot more. I mean, the Enneagram makes for laughter, I think. <laughs> yeah. Not so, taking it seriously. 
So if somebody gets uh, inspired by what we were talking today, um, first they might uh, read an introduction, what the Enneagram is, if you don't know what it is, and see the, the structure, the, the wheel with all the types and something. And then you uh, write to Christine. Uh, can you give your, uh, your details where they can contact you? Sure, of course. But also if they don't want to right away go purchase a book, the Enneagram Institute's website is fabulous. Mm -hmm. It's like a mini book. Okay. So that's just enneagraminstitute.com. Mm -hmm. And your website? My website, I've got a couple of websites. Um, the most recent one is um, choosingcompassion.org, which is about the book. Mm -hmm. so that would give a good introduction, I think. Um, the, and you can contact me through through that, although it would be more direct because, because of the Squarespace that is supporting my um, website. There have been some glitches lately. Let me just give you my direct email address. Mm -hmm. So I still have my email address from my university. Mm -hmm. C, the letter C, King. K I N G at Barry B A R R Y dot E D U. Okay. I think that would be a more direct way to contact me. And um, yeah. yeah. And I can highly recommend. And also watch the the group uh, talk we had, the group introduction, you can say, because there were some people who got a big help to identify their uh, Enya type in only very few minutes i mean that in the session the whole session was with uh check-ins and check-outs it was an hour and i think you you gave to three people you gave the 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 any type suggestion i, I can't remember now but i will really link awesome. it. i will link the the video under this video and so people can see that as a yeah. inspiration to maybe yeah. dig deeper if someone's curious and I'm asking the kind of the questions I want to ask within five minutes, most people, but better than that, yesterday I was working with a couple of people together because sometimes they come in as a team and then they started to want to know more about their sisters or their partners. Yeah, exactly. And we could go quickly with that as well. Within a few minutes, they said, oh my gosh. That's so why. <laughs> and then the value of that and yeah. this is a good place to end, really, is that if you're having difficulty with your sister or a partner um, and you identify the number correctly, you can see them at level one, see those qualities, and they shift. Wonderful. And you don't need to get angry anymore because of something which you don't like, but it's just because they are like they are, you know? Yes, they are. But if you quietly send them and maybe we're using mirror neurons in our nervous system whatever way i just see big results happening in families if they choose to you want to be curious that way they're seeing the best in the person and then they just go up their levels and they do it spontaneously yeah. we influence each other hugely we were talking about that before yes, yeah we do yeah uh, so we were talking about a poem you wanted to read at the end was it that was the poem, the forest essence that we read. Ah, that was the one you read for me. Okay. Is there one for each? I mean, if you want me to read one from one of the other numbers that you're curious about, how it I'm might. I'm curious be. about the six and the nine. Okie dokie, here we go. <laughs> um, okay, the six essence. I receive solidity and steadiness. I receive strength from my core giving me courage. I receive inner peace. I receive and trust that I'm guided and supported. I release the need to worry. I'm safe and I am secure. The Rumi quote, when you do things from your soul, you feel a river moving in you, a joy. Mm. Nice. And the nine? Miss, we finish this up with the nine? Yeah, for sure. Here we go. On the top of the structure. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish I could show you all these photographs because they, yeah. they communicate, you know, the, the healthy and the less healthy qualities. But here we are, the nine essence. I receive wholeness and oneness. I receive my true purpose to remember that we are all united. I receive the union of opposites, good and evil, life and death, joy and sadness. I receive holy love that heals separateness and isolation. I release any need to forget my gift that I am whole, just as I am, I am whole. And Rumi, take someone who doesn't keep score, who's not looking to be richer or afraid of losing, who has not the slightest interest even in his or her personality. He or she is free. Very good. Really? Thank you. That's a wonderful closing word. Thank you very, very much. And see you again for the next discussions. Oh, okay. all are whole. Yeah, we are whole. Are, are. And we are united. Yes, we are. Thank you. Thank you.